I, I want to tell stories with my songs, most definitely. Music is meant to move people, not just to shake your ass. Life's too short not to laugh at it, most definitely. Um, I think humor is just the problem solver to everything. Well, um, I was born in Santa Barbara, California, and that's like about an hour north from Los Angeles. And um, my parents are both traveling ministers. I sang Oh Happy Day maybe a thousand times. I was kind of just raised in a, you know, a very healthy but sheltered and strict kind of religious family where MTV was blocked on the TV and VH1 was blocked and I never saw any of that stuff. I um, started taking trips to Nashville and just being around like, you know, the veteran uh, songwriters over there that are professionals at crafting a song and the lyrics and just like the verses and the choruses and was around that at a really young age and around a lot of adults and kind of like grew, grew up really fast. I remember um, having a conversation with a writer and they were saying, okay, so if you could write or make a record with anybody or just work with anybody or meet anybody, who would you want it to be? And I had no reference point because, I mean, I didn't know anything. I, you know, I didn't know, I, I barely even knew some of the Beatles songs, you know, which like everybody knows a Beatles song, come on. And um, so I went home that night and I went to the hotel room and I turned on the TV and up popped an interview with Alanis Morissette and uh, Glenn Ballard and he was talking about Jagged Little Pill and I was like, I know that song. I came back the next day and I said, uh, I'd, like, I'd like to meet that guy. And he's like, okay, well, well, we'll try and set up a meeting. And I had my father drive me up to LA. I went in there and I sang him a song and got a call the next day saying, oh yeah, I've been looking for you. So he developed me over um, like three years and always encouraged me. He said, write a song every single day. And I'm like, write a song every single day? I can't write a song every single day. That's crazy. He's like, it doesn't even matter if it's a minute and a half. It's just kind of like always, you know, using that muscle and using your voice as an instrument um, because it is my main instrument. Get the glitter off your clothes now That's what you get for waiting 
Thank you for watching Direct TV and sticking around and not changing that channel. I'm Katy Perry once again, and um, I'm going to do a song by myself. It's called Mannequin. It really hasn't been overnight. I've been signed, I've been let go, I've had it all, I've lost it all. I should have quit a long time ago. I mean, the music industry for a new artist is, is, is a really, really difficult thing, especially these days. It was a little bit easier a while ago. And, you know, I don't, I don't take anything for granted anymore, especially hitting the bottom. I just wanna like make pop cool again. I think there's a void for like, you know, where is the Cindy Lauper? Where is the Joan Jett? Where is the Pat Benatar? I feel like the music industry is somewhat missing that rock girl. I have a song called You're So Gay. Um, it's just kind of, it's taking the piss out of, you know, my generation. It definitely stemmed from one, one somewhat of a specific being dumped and walking away from, you know, dude's apartment and 
hearing him just immediately go on the piano and trying to write a song in a minor key, of course. And I'm just like, I'm done with you. <laughs> so we have this song, it's called You're So Gay. Yeah. Um, and you know what? This one really goes out to all those, those guys, and I know every one of you know those guys that, you know. Default picture, MySpace. Um, yeah, and they, you know, there's nothing wrong with a little guy liner or a guy that uses straight iron, i.e. my whole band. Um, but uh, to my ex-boyfriend, I just really want my jeans back. <laughs> So this is called You're So Gay. And if you know the words, please sing along.
thank you for that. All right, guys, time to wipe away those tears. This song is called Hot and Cold, and thank you for watching, and thank you for coming. I'm Katy Perry. You change your mind like a girl changes clothes, and you I'm not like hipster cool, but I'm not like pop star lame either. So I'm somewhere in between. And I know that sometimes I get a little bit of flack for, you know, my big mouth or my opinions or, you know, maybe my lyrics being honest and open and what have you. But then I get messages from girls, you know, 14, 15, 16 saying, I've never been able to write or say or communicate exactly how I feel, but I just listened to that song and it was exactly what I wanted to say and thank you for saying that. I've never had fans before, so I'm excited to start making some. I'm just here to play music and do what I always do. <sighs> Hi, I'm Katy Perry. And I'm Faraz. We 
um, we have the same. We work with the same um, record label, and we have the same people on our team, and just wanting us to succeed. And you know, we we live within blocks of each other, so we're always calling up each other. <laughs> Where are you going tonight? <laughs> Where are you going? Tonight? You want to go? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> We go out and you know go to like the little dive bars, or we'll have dinner parties with our friends. And next thing you know, we're playing taboo till 2:30 in the morning, and <laughs> getting it all wrong. Oh, you know it's We've going it. down. Let's play. Now. Let's play. <laughs> Everybody, please welcome for us. Great job, Katie. That was loud. Thank you. We're going to slow things down a bit with a song called Rush. You might have already introduced that, but I couldn't hear it back there. Yeah. 
I just wanted to sort of create music that people would walk away and uh, take a piece of it with them. I, I sort of want to strike some sort of chord within whoever I play for that they leave and they felt like they had an experience. It wasn't just a bunch of noise. I think my music definitely is pop because it has all of those elements, but at the same time, um, there is a sort of emotional charge to it. I think that music really is a universal language. It's really something that anybody of any age, you know, and uh, walk of life can connect to. When I was much younger, uh, when I was five, um, my parents got divorced. My father's Middle Eastern, and uh, he's from Jordan. And um, my mom is from, you know, a small town in Illinois. They got divorced, and it was my dad's first visitation, you know, with me. And I was sort of always interested in music. And, um, you know, at that age, he asked me if I wanted to go to Disneyland. And I was like, yeah, sure. And we stopped by Walmart and got this little toy Casio keyboard. And uh, that was sort of meant to, I guess, keep me quiet, <laughs> you know, shut me up. And uh, got on the plane, and um, I sort of realized that we weren't, in fact, going to Disneyland, but, you know, my father was kidnapping me. My mom actually uh, had worked with the embassy, you know, the sort of American embassy and different government organizations and things. And she ended up actually coming over and uh, kind of repeating the same operation that my father did. And uh, she kidnapped me back. And that's why I, I sit here today. And um, I guess sort of being thrust into that situation, you know, at that age, I connected the emotional sort of content of what I was doing with emoting through music. So I wrote my first song uh, when I was that age for my mom because I was missing my family and I didn't know what was going on and uh, the song just came out of nowhere. So I think, um, you know, at that age, music always made that sort of connection. So whenever I'm angry or whenever I'm wanting to hit somebody or, you know, I'm falling in love with somebody or in lust with somebody, as the case may be, um, I, uh, I'll go to my keyboard, you know, and I'll write a song. We're gonna do a song right now called Dear God. And it's a little bit of a prayer, I guess. Dear God, listen up. I have to ask you a question. I can't hear, think you're breaking up I need a clear connection And God, are you listening? And God, are you even there? Now answer this, if you really exist, why? to deal with all this bullshit what did i ever do can i make it up to you if you're so full of grace then send it on down the sins we learn from the time of our birth are an endless source of confusion See, I'm on a search because I've heard you got a magic solution. And God, it's time that you explain what's the use of all of this pain. Now, answer this if you really exist. Why do I have to deal with all this bullshit? What did I ever do? Can I make it up to you? If 
you're so full of grace than sin it song uh, it's called marshmallow spaceship and I wrote this for uh, a friend of mine who I used to hang out a lot with when I was younger and then she moved away and so I wrote this song
of the silvery lights You've flown into a new dimension You and I get so high And pierce right through the sky On board of my I, I don't think I, I, I don't set out to sort of uh, pay homage to anybody intentionally, I don't think. But I think that as a songwriter, you know, growing up listening to all of this different music, of course it's going to sort of form, you know, the way you write and, and sort of the way you play music. So um, I have hundreds of influences and you could probably hear a little bit, you know, in, in everything that I do. But I think the thing that cohesively sort of ties it together is me, you know, and is, is the voice. I think I'd just really like to, to touch people. The most amazing thing is when people come up to me after a show or after hearing me somewhere or something and sending messages and saying like, you've really touched me in this way or you've made this possible for me or you've been an inspiration and that sort of thing. Um, and that's one side of it. The other side of it is, is that as, as an artist, or as a musician, sometimes, I'm gonna speak for myself, I can be a selfish individual in the sense that playing music is such a sort of cathartic process for me, and it really enables me to channel all of my emotions, whether they're good or bad, and uh, into this form that I can understand. So, in the sense, playing music and, and recording records and writing songs, um, it's a very sort of therapeutic process for me. Um, Hollywood's Not America is uh, featured on American Idol as their goodbye song for uh, the Hollywood week. I think that the Idol spot uh, that I got was sort of uh, an awesome thing. Um, I'd be, I think it's really, it's kind of lame that people like want to try to figure out a way to um, like diminish your cred or whatever, you know, it's like, I had this one, this one radio person say something like, like, do you feel like your street cred is now like void because of this? And I'm like, street cred, I'm, I'm like a pop musician. Like what kind of street cred do I like, do I need or like should I, I have? I had it. <laughs> you know, exactly. And I think it's, it's more about the fact that there's a major show, which is a cool show, and uh, they wanted to use my song. I look at it like I wrote a song that fits you know, a TV show really well, and um, I was honored that they asked me to, to be a part of it. I actually got uh, the title track off of my debut record, and uh, it is called Hollywood's Not America. It's, really, it's not the title track, it's the single. She hardly recognizes herself at all And there's never any rain When you want it, a hollow little game And you want it, looking for a thrill But you've done it all So long, put your blue jeans back on, girl Go home, remember Hollywood's not America So long Put your blue jeans back on girl Go home Remember Hollywood's not America And everybody hears From 
somewhere else You can make a million dollars Well, you might lose yourself And you can take the heat But will your heart grow cold? They say act is just pretending But even that gets old And there's never any rain When you want it, a hollow little game And you want it Looking for a thrill, but you've done it all So long, put your blue jeans back on, girl, go home Remember Hollywood's not America So long, put your blue jeans back on, girl, go home Remember Hollywood's not America and I know what you're doing I know that you you can't be Thank you so much.